In this episode, we're going to use Glue Tread Tire Repair Anywhere. We're going to repair a puncture in a sidewall that can happen when you're off road. So stick around. Hey, welcome to CJTV. So glad to see you here. In this episode, we're going to have a look at this product called Glue Tread Tire Repair Anywhere, and it's used to repair punctures and sidewalls that occur when you're off road. Now, I was at the Overland North Spring Gathering 2023 giving a workshop on tire plug repair, and coincidentally, right next to my workshop was a vendor, AfraidNotRopes.ca. Now, I'll have a link in the description section to their website and you can see all of their off-road recovery gear that they sell. It's very nice quality and I can talk more about that later. But they also sold this product here, Glue Tread Tire Repair Anywhere. It's essentially made to repair sidewalls that get punctured while you're off-road. It also says off-road use only because when you take your rig on the highway to get home you want to make sure you have a tire that has its full integrity so that you get home nice and safe. But when you're on the trail something like this could come in handy. This is an image of Dieter's tire that he punctured while off-road. He had to go and use his spare. Now should he encounter another puncture of the sidewall of the spare then he'd be in trouble. But if you have something like this Technically, it says you can repair the sidewall while you're on the trail to help you get off the trail and then when you're on the highway, you can put your spare tire on which has its full integrity so you can get home safe. Okay, so let's open this up and have a look at what all of the items are that are in this package. This is the accelerator bottle and it comes labeled and has a little spray bottle. Now here are the four glue bottles, but they give you eight applicator tips so that once you've used one, you can toss it and you have a fresh one the next time, should there be one. Here are the pieces of sandpaper. Here are the two four and a half inch patches. And here's the two three inch by one and a half inch patches. And here's the instructions. Okay, let's get started with doing the sidewall puncture repair. And to do this, I'm going to introduce you to my friend Dieter. Dieter, come on in. I'd like to introduce you to the channel. Now, some of you might remember Dieter. He helped me in this tire plug repair challenge video. And it's this video stems from that because some people were asking, well, what about if you have a puncture in the sidewall? Those tire plugs aren't very suitable when you have a puncture in the sidewall. And when you're on the trail, I mean, you could resort to desperate measures, but this sidewall repair kit just might meet our needs. So Dieter, thank you. And why don't we start the repair by puncturing the sidewall of the tire? I always actually wanted to do that. <laughs> Now, when you have a puncture on the sidewall, you will lose all the air, so that has to be a given. Obviously, you will need a pump to pump it up later on. When you get the tire punctured, make sure that it is clean and ready for repair. And the first step from Glue Tread says that you use a screwdriver or a knife to pry the edge apart so you could apply adhesive to the two opposing edges here in the tire. Okay, so the package comes with these glue tubes and what you're to do is remove one of your glue tubes and they come with these applicator tips. So you'd have to cut the end of this tube and then apply the applicator tip on top. When I usually handle glue or anything chemical, I do wear gloves. I don't want that stuff on my hands. There we go. Okay, so I do the work. Oh, well, you got the gloves. Oh, good idea. Okay, here's the applicator tip. And now the instructions say to pry apart the edges so you can apply some drops of the adhesive to the edges. And as you can hear, there is no more air coming out. Now once the two edges have adhesive, you align them against each other again and we can move on to the next step of the process. 
So for the next step of the process, they suggest that you rough up the bonding surface, the area where the tire and the patch will meet. Now you could trim the patch, but we're just gonna use the whole patch because we know when we line the patch up against that hole, we have more than a quarter inch of space for the patch to cover beyond the cut. So now we'll just rough up the surface and we'll make sure it's at least the size of the patch. So now that Dieter has sanded the tire beyond the point of the cut and we've seen that the patch actually fits within that area. So when we apply the bonding agent, it'll vulcanize the glue with the rubber. But just to make sure that when we apply the patch, we put it exactly where we want. We're going to use this marking pencil and trace out the outline of where the patch is to go. So now we know once we apply the glue to the patch, we could just line it up with our marks. Although the instructions don't say it, we're also going to sand the side of the patch that's going to be bonded to the tire. Oh, fine, okay. So, so now we're going to apply the glue and the way you do this is you put many tiny drops and the instructions say about 25 per square inch. Now the instructions say to just put tiny drops so that the adhesive has the opportunity to spread so that you have an even bond between the patch and the tire. So now the instructions say to apply the patch with the blue side down to the space that you marked on the tire. And apply pressure for 30 seconds. Um, this is why you wear gloves. Now the instructions say leave the patch for an hour so that it cures, but they also provide an accelerant. So if you use the accelerant that they provide in the package, it'll be cured within 15 seconds. So let's give that a shot. I'm really curious here. <laughs> okay. So that's had its 30 seconds to stick. Oh, it, it kept the rubber glove. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, so just to be safe, we're going to have rubber gloves on and we're going to apply the accelerant which says instead of waiting for an hour, apply this and it'll be cured in 15 seconds. So let's have a look. Okay, I gave it a good dousing. So given that it's had its 15 seconds, one would think that we can't peel it off. That is on solid. Better than you. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> so far, I'm impressed. So the instructions also say that you can use your time here to spend sanding down the edges so you don't have sharp edges to catch. Uh, that's your choice if you want to do that. But what we're going to do now is reinflate the tire, install it on the Jeep, and try running over a couple logs and that sort of thing to see if it'll withstand some pressure. Okay, let's fill her up. Now one good test to see after you've inflated the tire with air is spray some soapy water on the patch. And then if there's any bubbling coming off of it, you know it's still leaking. Well, so far so good. Yeah, that's perfect right there, rubbing right up against it. Back again, back up against it to give it some more rubbing. Look at that, oh yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay.
that's pretty impressive. You can see how the curve scratches up against it and the patch is still there. So in the shot, you can see how the edge of the tire was rubbed against the curb, simulating rocks on the trail. We sprayed some soapy water on it. It's not bubbling up. So the patch has been holding up pretty well. So it's a nice little solution if you end up getting a puncture while you're on the trail. Looks good as new. Well, Dieter, I'm pretty impressed with how well it's held up. What are your thoughts? Well, I couldn't believe it, it actually held out. And it was so, I would say, simple to actually apply. We had the benefit of working on a table, which is not always the case, but I can see it to be very helpful out in the outdoors. I definitely gonna travel with one in the future. There's no question about that. I found it was really hardy. It really held up, especially when we rubbed the side of the tire against the curb. I thought that the patch, if it isn't secured on really strongly, that it would come off in that application, but it, it hung in there. So I think it's pretty trail worthy. Yeah, I mean, we did the hardener and it's, I mean, you hardly have time to drink a, a, a pop or so until it is set and you can pretty much keep on going. So, I mean, that's convincing for me. Yeah, I mean, when you're on the trail, if you don't have an hour to wait for that uh, glue to cure, that accelerator is, is makes the patch cured in 15 seconds and we tested it out and it held up. So I'm pretty impressed. And this is a good time to give a shout out to Ian McKay who gave us this tire sidewall repair kit. And I'll have a link to his website where you could purchase this kit for yourself. And while you're there, check out his off-road recovery gear. The website is afraidnotropes.ca and he has all kinds of excellent quality recovery gear. In fact, that's a video all to itself. Uh, yeah, actually at the Overland North gathering, I uh, met this guy and I was impressed on how he sort of, he said, knitted the soft shackles and that's where we discovered the patch kit. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. So a tip that I'd also like to share is if you find the kit to be a little bit expensive, keep in mind if you're on the trail with friends all the time, you could go in on the kit and that way your whole group is covered should the unfortunate event occur. Well, that's it for this week's episode of CJTV. Thank you so much for joining us. If you found the video helpful, how about giving it a thumbs up? And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button right there. Until the next time, I'm Dino for CJTV. My name is Dino, and again, thank you Dino. Be well, stay safe, take care.